Really going to be starting on Olympia's stage, Crystal Oasis. God, I love, love that we've been able to open up with skins on uh on on starters. Yeah, it's just a good change. I, I you know, it's confusing why you weren't able to up until this point, and now we have access to. And uh, Sego's going to be looking comfortable here. Now this is a very different Olympia than we will see from Penguin. Penguin kind of playing that kind of um, you know we saw very defensive play from Coda. We're going to see really really aggressive play out of Sego. Oh, Penguin kind of here we that are. Middle ground right now, going very aggressive off the side of the oh, stage, no. missing out. Didn't have the jump available. Quick little taunt there, Pego, or excuse me, uh, <laughs> used to commentating Penguin now. We've done two sets back to back. Uh, Zego, missing out on the, uh, the 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 chase off the side of the stage there doesn't set him up well, but he's going to be able to keep this pressure up on Zaro. Yeah, and but you know one of the things that we've seen from Sego is a beautiful mastery of this character, knowing exactly how to play it, how to move, how to dance, and you know making Zaro dance to his tune. Yo, know, taking the first two stocks in this and continuing to rack up so much. Find so much percent so quickly on this character, and he does it looking good. Uh, and he's going to continue to do that throughout this. Now, Zoro off the side of the stage right now, 74%. Psycho just playing his, uh, patiently, biding his time. Not going too aggressive now. Good forward tilt off the side. Now, uh, Zoro splitting oh! the defense there, but Sega was ready. Ready to hold on there. And uh, just recovering that upbeat there. Obviously, Zara with many, many ways to get back to stage. We've seen him be able to mix people up consistently throughout, I want to say, the last two years has really been Zara's uh, rise to, to success. Um, it may be even a little bit longer than that. And right now, Sego trying to put out a name for himself at the moment. Has been a dominant workshop player, but now with the workshop uh, character starting to bleed into the main cast. Oh my we're gonna god! We're going to see some play from Sego. And there's a good back air there to take the lead, but it's already 150%. This game is close. Yeah, it is close. And that back air coming out from... Oh, wow, a parry, parry on that. Beautiful stuff coming out from Zaro. But, you know, Zaro with the back air, with the Orkane back air, two hits, going to be able to break that focus. But Seiko, who with the down strong, only one hit needed to break that stock and break open this set. The question is, who's going to take game one? Zaro is, is very comfortably weaving in and out of that crystal zone. Just, uh, you know, making Sego burn it, trying to get those pops, and, and Zara's already ready to get out of the way. There it is again, just grabbing the pass while there, not wasting the jump or anything, not getting hit by it. Back to stage nice and comfortably now. And now, setting up a, a potential edge guard against Sego here, who's turned it around, and now Zara off the side of the stage, not comfortable here. Sego trying to go deep there, misreading the, the, the play there from Zaro. And now, Zaro once again caught off the side of the stage, using the bubbles to get himself back comfortably. These two are split by 3% at the moment. There no is an up strong, it's gonna whiff from Zaro. Now, Sego with the clutch factor. Can he make this game back? There's the down smash, keeping himself alive though. Sego trying to find his way back to center stage. Zoro setting up so many potential kills here. There's the down air, getting him off stage. Zoro, can you make it back to stage here? Is this going to be Sego? There's the back hit of the forward air, keeping Zoro alive. 121% on this Orcane. You know, Olympia's relatively heavy, but anything from either of these players could kill already. Oh my god. <laughs> Both of them just throwing it out. Oh, the back airs. There it is. I was worried that first one didn't kill, but he's going to take it with the second. And that is the power of that back air. Able to get those follow ups. And there it is. Zaro taking game number one. So taking game number one on Olympia's home stage, and where does Sego go next? Straight back. You know, honestly, if Sego had an SD in that first stock, maybe we see a different game. Maybe we see something new. But I don't know. Sorrow is making some good adjustments there. So the question is, is this the answer? Is the salty run back what you want here? Or is this just going to be the same thing again? Playing patient in the center of the stage there, and now Sego trying to find the setups. I'm happy to see the uh, uh, this stage once again. It's a beautiful stage again. We talked about it again. The music also amazing. But Sego has looked comfortable here in the previous sets we've seen him in, and also here versus Zaro. Oh. Zaro looking for ooh, a potential run towards grand finals, though, at the moment. Obviously, this is winner's finals between these two. High pressure. Winner of this set goes to grand finals, where you guaranteed part of the prize pool and a chance at the uh, kind of the lion's cut of it. Mm -hmm. We'll see who's going to be able to get their hands on that at the moment. Obviously, Sego. Very ready to play in the tournament setting. These two have played against each other plenty oh of times God. before. And there's that forward smash taking out that first dock. For, and, you know, for Zaro. No matter what the tricky movement is from Sego, with that jump cancel uh, in the crystal wave. But, oh my God. You know, Zaro just seems ready for it. Ooh. But Sego, ready for that recovery. Ready to cover wow. everything. And oh my God. Once again, it's... 
it's like this isn't the the match where Sego SD'd, but it's just like nothing ever happened in that first stock. <laughs> yeah, just keeping things as close as possible. These two have been barely like separated this entire set so far. Obviously, it's still short lived, but we've got a lot more games ahead of us between these two. Um, <clears throat> at least you know, like we've got oh, actually really close on the edge guard there. Now, King Sego keep this thing up on the side. 100% found right now for Zaro, who's now turning things oh. around using so many smash attacks and is able to find one, and Sego landing too low. I want to give credit all the way back to Sego's edge guard finding that first stock, using the up B towards the, the, the blast zone, just calling out the recovery from uh, Zaro and finding the catch and found him a stock, but now it's looking all favoring Zaro. Yeah, and Zaro, oh my god, the backers! Dear wow. lord! Now, Zaro... Playing the tried and true, playing something that we've seen time and time again, but still finding some way to show us something new, always bringing the top of the top of the A game. Yeah, and that's what you expect to see from two of the best players, like bar none. Uh, Sego, Zaro, two huge names at the moment. <clears throat> um, Sego, of course, uh, you know, we'll say it a million times, with the best workshop player. I don't think that there's any contention over that. If somebody wants to correct me in chat, go for it. I mean, but as far recently, as I know, he's been dominant forever. We recently just had a tournament called Wonderwall where we gathered the top 50 workshop players of all time. Not necessarily of all time, but the top 50 active workshop players. Uh, and Sego ended up taking the entire thing with uh, Mora. No, not a character that you'll see here today, but, you know, like we said, Sego incredibly dominant on the workshop cast. But immediately afterwards, Sego says, hey, you know what? Crystal, uh, Crystal Oasis isn't exactly what I need here. What I need is just a smaller stage that I can actually seal things out on. I'm going to be bringing it to Rockwall. You know, <laughs> shout outs to Escape here. Yeah, I love it here. I mean, I think that really, if there's one thing that Sego has for certain, or, or, or let's start with Zoro. I think if Zoro has any quality that I think is amazing is that he does not change his play style regardless of the situation. No matter where we are, Zoro always plays consistently. Sego, not at all the same. Sego is probably the biggest oh my momentum player that I can recall from anything. Sego with momentum is terrifying. One of the best players in my opinion, like, at all yeah, when he when he's got the ball rolling but right now he doesn't and right now it's all favoring zaro yeah it's all favoring zaro and like we said you know when sego has the momentum it's great but zaro stealing everything at the beginning but once again looking just like the previous games did that first stock happen <laughs> it's looking like it might not have and now we're gonna see if sego's gonna be able to ride that one out for a little bit longer here keeping the pressure up on zaro right now 30% found on that Orcane, nice and early. Good using that Bubbles to just try and break things up. Nice parry there from Sego. Haven't seen that too much in the set. Just predicting that uh, movement, getting those attacks on board, and now using a lot of dash track, trying to force Zaro towards the edge of the stage. He wants an edge guard. He wants to put Zaro in that uncomfortable situation. He wants to try and find those kills early. Olympia with a lot of spikes, able to take stocks incredibly early with that down air, forward air, up air, and uh, I believe an up tilt. Yeah, but either way, you know, Sego gonna continue to rack up this damage, gonna continue to get edge guard, but the bubble butt off the side, Zaro gonna lose the stock there that time around. And just like that, Sego gonna try to rack up this damage, gonna try to hold on to this lead. 53% and counting, Zaro might be gone here. Oh my lord, if we've seen one oh thing from God. this tournament, or one thing from this set, it's that you cannot SD versus Sego. You can't afford to give him that room. There's the stock found from Zara right now, but 99 on the Orcane. Can he make it back? It's such a big deficit right now, and Sego has not seen any deficit so far, taking that one with almost a clean third stock. Sour hit, by the way. <laughs> Jeez. Oh my god. You know, Sego gonna be taking it with stock number three. And the sour, quote unquote, sour fare. Oh my lord. Olympia. You know, Sego showing his incredible, incredible mastery of this character. Like, this character's yeah, been out for so short, but. Really yeah, and, and clear, it, it's it's really nice that these people who have experience on these characters are able to show it off in the current brackets and show, you know, that these aren't new characters, mind you. They're just new to the game. People have played them for a long time already, and I think that we're, I'm glad to see that we get to see somebody like Sego, who has so much experience on them, really show off what these characters can do. Going to be going into uh, game number four, uh, game set <clears throat> two for Zaro, one for Sego. Sego looking to bring this one back on Merchant Port. 
Yeah, and merch report. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> Orkane's home stage. And there's something to be said about home stages here, you know. Both players really liking to opt for the home stage advantage, but I don't know if it's going to be working out for them just yet. And, you know, Zaro racking up the damage, doing the same thing that we've seen in the previous games, but Sega really seems to come online after losing that first stop. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's unfortunate for him that it's taken that long for him to get into gear because I think if he could play as well as he has been playing on those later stocks, it would really service him well and starting to see that right now, that aggression going for those down airs, those fairs, just getting them out of neutral, making good use of that dash tech to break up what Zara was looking for. There's a big forward smash to get him off stage. Really not that much knockback though on those early percentages. Needs a little bit more to start threatening those kills, but it's a good amount of damage for Sego right now. He's keeping the pressure on the side of the stage. Up smash, not the same story. Almost getting the kill there. And there oh. it is a down smash, getting the full roster out. And the upbeat not Ooh. quite gonna do it. Beautiful stall from Zaro, making sure that Sego can't do it just, just yet. And oh my god, the down strong's coming out. This is terrifying to be this is a terrifying position to be in from Sego, but the forward air going to be stealing out that first stock. This is a very different game. Sega with a lead is is definitely scary. Even if you even if you are Zaro, oh one my of god. the best players that we that we have. It's uh it's amazing to see. Oh, good read there. Just grabbing the roll there against Sego. But Sego already found 70% is what I was going to say there. It, it, it's so quick for him to find that percentage. And there's that multi-resets multi, uh, multi resets there on the um, the focus, obviously. Mm -hmm. You get one hit on the initial focus. You get another one, I believe. Is that right? You on get the, another on, on activation. Uh, yeah, like, another the, on activation. The activation is super armor in general, I believe. There you go. I'm not sure if that's a bug. That's just how it's been working. But either yeah, way, the up B killing off the top, definitely not a bug. How That's definitely how it's supposed to work. And Sego continuing to rack up this lead, continuing to play this advantage on Zaro's Ooh. home stage, on Zaro's counter pick. Yeah, and Zaro looking uncomfortable, I was going to say, but finding that down smash at only 33%, the deficit has been cut down by two thirds. But still, Sego looking in control and has been for pretty much this whole set. Uh, and, and now he needs to try and uh, take control of this final game and push this one to a game five. He's definitely looking in position to do that. This is for grand finals winner side. This is a popular place to be in any tournament. I, I, it's very, you know, if you want to win it from anywhere, it's going to be the easiest spot for both of these two. And obviously they want to. There's money on the line at the moment between uh, all of these top three players at the moment. Obviously the loser of this set will be earning the privilege of playing against Penguin uh, for that potential to make it back into the grand finals. And that's a good strong. carry there from Sego. The upstrong going to take it and we're going to game five. Oh my god, I love the animation that Olympia has, you know, puts her heart and soul into every single one of those upstrong and Sego. I, I could hear, you know, scream that stream of power just saying, hey, we're bringing it to game five, boy. And just like that, all the way. It, we said that Sego is looking better after losing that first stock. I wonder how it's going to be after losing the first two games. This is potentially a reverse 3 on one of the greatest Rivals players to ever touch the game. Yeah, and uh, it's so cool that we get to say that every single week. We're always running into <laughs> these amazing players here. Uh, you know, every single Thursday, we have some of the best players in the world competing for some legitimate cash prizes. And here we go. The, all the gloves are coming off. We're going to the Endless Abyss now between Zaro and Sego. This is for winner side of Grand Finals. And uh, I don't think either of these two are going to let up anytime soon. Zaro deciding to move away oh from the God. platforms. And uh, Sego going to go very aggressive on the start here. It's yeah, a good zoning game. There's so much of this, you know, it, double jumps coming out from Sego. Playing as airily as possible on a stage with zero platforms whatsoever means that Zaro can't do the same kind of tech chasing that you see from Arcane with a down tilt, you know, tech chase down strong. But either way, Sego Ooh. racking up that damage, almost yeah. getting the stock there, and Zaro. And you do not break that crystallize. Uh, it's for how long you're in hit stun, as far as I know. So if you can keep it going and keep that crystallize on board, and the longer that hit stun lasts, the longer they're in oh. there for you get the pop up. But regardless, talking about getting popped up into the air, there's that up strong coming out from Zaro. Has so much kill power and always has. What a weight! Orkane Classic, good weight there get the punish now and Sego going very deep off the side of the stage has those cancels missing the up strong now Zaro very comfortable at the edge of the stage Sego just running as far as he can from that puddle and now set himself up for success at the edge of the stage here Zaro quick little orca to get himself back on stage and there's the up strong oh my god and you know Sego playing so patiently like I, I was gonna, about to say Sego's starting to fish a little bit but then all of a sudden you know regain his wits to start playing patient stop moving and Zaro oh my Ooh. god beautiful parry 
coming yeah, that's out. That's a hard move to parry. Yeah, and I think Zaro's been more consistent than literally any other player I've ever seen at getting the parry on that. Yeah, and I mean, obviously, new character, it's a different timing. You gotta react based on the sound cues. You gotta react based on the animation from Olympia. But Zaro has been ready to. We've seen that multiple times this set already. And that's challenging to do. Keeping that consistent. We've talked about Zaro's consistency before. There's that big forward smash coming through right now for Sego. Has the crystal zone way off the side of the stage. So if he can get Zaro knocked into it, it's gonna be bad. But there's the down smash. Good DI from Sego. Oh, and the and the parry. Once again, coming out from Sego. You know, beautiful stuff. And I, I don't know. This is... Back and forth and back and forth, 103% on Zaro. Going to be getting the down strong, taking Sego right off the top. And Zaro needs something big if he's going to halt Sego's momentum here. Yeah, you know, we talked about Sego playing with the momentum this whole time. I'm sure he can hear his heartbeat in his ears right now. He's probably playing as hard as he can. The adrenaline's high between these two. This is a high stakes match going towards grand finals. There's the crystal pop. Sego trying to come from so far away. Oh my God. Look at that turnaround with the side beat of pressure. And now Zoro, with no safety to get back to stage, he manages to <gasps> land. Parry? There's the parry. There's the kill. We're going to last stock a piece. Last stock a piece, only 24% on Sego. And Sego, you know, has nothing quite set up just yet. Going to get Zoro off stage. No puddle on board. This could be it. Oh. Sego going so aggressive there, just missing the timing there. Doesn't find the spike. And now it's all Zoro with the punish. Good up there there, but unable to find the kill. Look at the, the landing, landing there from Sego. Can he hold him off stage here? Good fair. Puddle is still down behind him. There's the forward smash. Sego just racking for scent here. Able to keep him in a good position here. There's the parry. Puddle is oh, still on in? board. Good play. Oh, second kill. It is. Sego going to winner's side grand finals. Sego went to winner's side grand finals with an upbeat that had zero chance of coming back. Oh my god. Sego putting his heart and soul into that reverse 3-0. Oh my, my god. Lord.